look great. It looks beautiful. Look mm -hmm. at them. Oh, what's that one? <laughs> What's that Let's one? See. What's that one? Wow. <laughs> yeah. My, okay. My, uh, looks like my ear is too uh, too yellow though. Yeah. Uh, gotta, we'll fix that. I gotta fix that. Up yeah. There. So we're gonna just do the same thing down here. Just put a little you think bit. That's the only problem with your painting. Yes. A too yellow ear. <laughs> it's the it's the glob, yeah. it's the glob coming like back. All of a sudden you're a pro now. You're worried about one tone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you can bring a little bit of that paint using your dry brush. Yeah. Just smooth it out here like this. So that's in, on the back part of it. Yeah, so you're just coming down here. Makes it work, you see, yeah, you can always yeah. get serious in these competitions. <laughs> <laughs> it says you're serious. Never. I'm concentrating, okay. Joanne. I'm now we're going to take that brush yeah. and just drop it in our water. We're not going to use not that one. Again. Not, not for now, anyway. Okay. Um, so we're going to take a uh, kind of like a medium square brush. Medium square brush. Okay. You can see Let's that. Yeah, okay. That. Yeah, okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to dip it a little tiny bit in the Payne's Gray. Which one was Payne's Gray? That dark one. <laughs> yeah. This one. So it's right that this dark, right here. Dark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it and there. For you, it's okay. Right. right there? Yeah. Dab it on your cloth so you don't okay. have too much on it. Okay. And now we're going to just give a little bit of color in here. In the back of his ear? In the back of his ear. Mm -hmm. And. Twitch. A little bit in the inner ear here. We're just gonna blend it out like that. So I put it here and then I'm blending it out like this. And I put a little bit up here. Great. Gives it definition. Definition. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Defines our moose. <laughs> <laughs> that's a far away. That's it's a, a beautiful painting. That's, a, a that's when you know you've done very well. Yes. I'm ugly. <laughs> no, it looks good. You're going to dip it in the Payne's Gray again. Oh, Payne's Gray. Yeah. Oh, whoa, I almost put it in the black, the Payne's oh, Black. The yeah, well, the black is, is, is okay, too. It's just very yeah. stark, right? So that's okay. why we use the Payne's Gray. Now we're going to add a little bit of color just under his, under his, his thing. His, his neck there. His neck. His neck uh, between. Uh, it's really hard to get in here. Okay, between the uh, horn and then top of the neck there. Okay, that just gives him again. You're just giving him a little bit of depth. Yeah. You know, depth. maybe a tiny bit with your dry brush, right up here. Yeah. yeah. So you've already got the paint on it. Yeah. No, you, you that, used the brush that you had. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just with no paint Clomp. on it. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> you used the brush that you had. But you dry You it. just dry it off, yeah. Oh, okay. And then you blend it up here. Oh, oh that's how we blend. That's how we blend. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, right, we're going to put... Ours aren't looking right. like what's on the... the yeah. Oh, yeah, sure that is. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit over here. Oh, over just his, a little over bit. Over his beak? Yeah, over his beak. Okay. Okay. We want mostly the top part of his beak to be a lighter color. So there we go. Okay. All right. You guys are doing really, really well. So you can do, again, just dip it in a little bit. Try to take most of it off. And you're just going to kind of bring it down in here. So it's, whoop, there we go. So it's down in here and just throughout his body. And again, it's just sort of from the scarf out. Gives it a little bit of depth. That's a all we're doing. A little bit of depth. Yeah. Remember to hang them in your office. Oh, I'll be hanging this one. Uh, <laughs> this will be in the trash can. No, yeah. no, tomorrow no. Tomorrow you're just going to get hung yes, outside. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow's garbage. No, tomorrow's garbage day. Yeah, tomorrow's right? garbage day. <laughs> well, where did mine go? <laughs> okay, so take the same brush. Yeah. Keeping the straight edge, dip it in the black. So you're just putting a tiny bit of paint on the very edge of it. On the edge. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Now we're just going to put a couple of little tiny lines up here. And if you have too much paint on, like I just did, then you take some off. And you're going to put a tiny few lines up here. It's just the horn. Because mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen a moose really close up, mm -hmm. but sometimes they're like horns. I hit, I hit one in they 2011. Look like, they look like wood. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know if I was looking at it oh, too really? intently. Yeah. You, you hit a... Yeah, oh, I my did, goodness. Yeah, 2011. Yeah, that, that'd be very scary. <laughs> and again, you can just put a tiny bit here. In the, the black One little there. line there. And putting a little bit more paint on your brush. Again, just on the tip of it. Just to see. Because I find that the square brushes, when you use the tip, yeah. you're using it like a line. It's very easy to use that way. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put his little mouth in here. We're all, we're, we're so doing, we are going to go if you straight down here, and then we just do a little, a little curve. Thing. Yeah, so it just looks like that. I'll try and show it over there. My my guy looks like he's having smoking a cigar now. Oh, that's okay. That'd be kind of cool, right? Okay, now we have to do his nostril hole. Yeah. And his nostril hole kind of goes like this, but it comes down in the same shape of his. So it's almost like a upside down nine or a six if you turn it this way. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You get that. So it's a nostril hole. You guys are doing awesome. <laughs> she, gets, she says that to all her students. Well, it's going to his head over here. I know I'm doing awesome. <laughs> you guys are almost done. Well, I am. Yeah, so yeah. My mind's looking. We're going to do an oh, eye. Oh, now the eye is yeah. going to go. See, this is where, this is the hard part of the painting, right? The You're eye? doing like the, the, the facial features. Yeah, a little bit. But okay. his eye is close to the that end antler? of his horn. Yeah, okay. yeah the antler. So... We're just going to put a shape in there. More of like an oval, eh? Yeah, kind of like an oval. You can make it like a cartoon eye if you want. Mine's got a big eye here. That's okay. Right, mine does not look like that. Because my guy yeah, opened up see? his big eye, see how bad Mark's painting is. <laughs> oh, no, your eye looks fine. Does yeah. it look good. fine? Yeah. Oh, that my God. Okay, alien. <laughs> My, my, mine looks like a cat. Show your, mine, that, mine that's a real like a, eye. Look at yours. Huh? Okay. Mine looks like a cat. A cat with a mixture of a Labrador Retriever. Yeah. Okay, okay, I okay. think okay. what would huh? make yours look more like a moose is if you and get Cali rid of this white it. right here. Yeah, right yeah, yeah just put some like brown back on there. Yeah. Are we, uh, <laughs> with that same <laughs> wet brush? Or yeah, no? you can, or just take a new brush. Okay. That's why we, we uh, get lots of brushes. Let's take a... Uh, it's got to go back and redo his work again. i got to do my work again. <laughs> He's perfect. <laughs> no, I've been instructed to go back. That's a, that's a polite <laughs> way of saying I did it wrong yeah. the first time. <laughs> All right. None of us else, no, none of the rest of us have to go back. Just, <laughs> just, just for the just record. Me. <laughs> okay, there. so here we are now. Okay, yeah. so now we're going to get a clean brush. Um, clean so you brush? can use another square one or a pointed one, depending on what you like. Do we need to clean? I like these squares. Do you? Yeah, I like the squares too. I but... stole all the squares though. Do we have any more squares? Sure we do. So we have two I... sets of brushes there. Or, or I can clean. Oh, I got to yeah. clean. See? Okay, okay so we're going to just get it a, a little bit now. wet. You should have stood beside Callie. Yeah, yeah. Ka <laughs> Callie's. Yeah, I do, right. please. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we're going to put it in the. <laughs> the, the white? The, the white, but not the gesso white. Okay, the. This uh, oh, geez. I yeah, so up it's. My yes. here. Yeah. No, right there. That's good. Here? That's okay. a good white. Yep, that's a okay. good white. And okay, so for that one. We are going, now I don't know if your eyes are dry enough. Mine is. Oh yeah, mine's plenty okay, dry. Okay, so we're going to do just a, <laughs> a little okay. white line over here, like that. <laughs> the white pupil. Yeah, the pupil. Uh oh. <laughs> Why did I dip it in yellow again? Son of a... Again. Why did I do that? That yellow's coming after you. Why do I keep yeah. like loving that yellow? Maybe you could turn your plate. Man, and I pulled you... a Kinsman. <laughs> Oh, no. Okay, I'm and really then you're going to put just a little, oh, make sure that you don't have black on it. And you're just going to put a tiny little dot right, right about there. Okay, there's your eye. The 
I got my eye on yeah, you. Yeah, look at that. I got my eye on you. He baby. looks like a very thoughtful. Huh? I got He's a deep thoughtful. Thought. A, yeah. deep, a deep thought moose. Oh, yeah, there you go. I don't know. We're, yeah. we're having something. Now, it all went downhill yeah, the minute we started here. <laughs> I've started to put my mitts back on. Right. <coughs> Excuse look me. Look at her eye. Her eye looks like it's looking at you. Yeah, well, so does mine. My, my, my eye looks like it, uh, it's having a bit of a... Well, you can fill some of your white eye. in black later. Can I fill that in later? Yeah, later. Yeah, we'll just... Okay, so since we have the white on our brush, Color let's, over that let's get a lot of white on our brush. Yeah. We're going to do the scarf, okay? So we're going to do like this part here, white, almost like a D. Okay. D for Dale, yeah. Okay, then we're going to bring it over here and we're going to do another another D over there. Another D over here. Going the opposite way, I guess. Mhm. Mm okay. And we're going to do it a little oh. almost like a bird here. See? Well, where is the bird? I'll write that. Yeah. It's almost like a bird there. Mhm. Mm okay. And then you're going to like make a same bird down below like that. Huh. And then you're going to fill those two things in. So it's just another stripe, but it was just easier to tell stripe. you that. <laughs> <laughs> easier, to, easier to do the, the, bird, the thing. bird trick. Yeah, the bird trick. There we go. Oh, these guys. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Uh -huh. And then uh -huh. we're going to do just one more down here. One more bird down there? Yeah, kind of like a bird. Right. I'm just gonna fill and it in. This doesn't look like a moose. Looks like a bit of a beaver now. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> look at oh no, bit, I would, I would bit, definitely bit, say bit that's a, a moose. You saw way yeah. too much paint on yours again. No, I <laughs> Kelly, never there's never too much paint. <laughs> Kelly said you have way too much paint. No. You know, there's such thing as uh, palette yeah. painting. Palette yeah, like with, with a palette knife. Yeah. You See, would do well with a palette knife. You would knife. do well yeah. at dropping down That's one. That's a polite one. way of no, saying actually, I failed this class. Yeah. No. And there's another class for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. No, <laughs> actually not. Huh? I find palette painting is much harder mm -hmm. than this. <laughs> and you've already got the technique going there. Uh, there you did. So very, there you go. It's very advanced. I like of course, it I did. It's like an angry one. I hit, see, that's the one I hit in 2011. I paid okay. attention. He's mad. Yeah, he, he looks he's like he's mad. after you. He's like, you took out my back legs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? So violent. <laughs> Next right. step. Okay. Yeah. We are going. I'm just going to put this down so I can show you that. <laughs> Jamie's cross-eyed. This is what we're going to mix a little bit of paint. <laughs> Okay. Okay. okay yeah. So, what? I have to come back here. Okay, there we go. There go. We are going to mix some of the Payne's gray. Payne's gray. Just stick that in the middle. Okay. So okay. Payne's gray in the middle. Yeah. We're going to mix a little bit of this light blue in with that Payne's gray. Okay. So it makes it like a lighter blue gray. And then we're going to ta tap it just a tiny bit of white in there. So it's a very nice light bluey gray that we're making. Whatever. I don't know if you want to see that. Uh, we went from Payne's gray so to this, uh, this is a, a gentle, bit, a so gentle blue. Oh, yeah, but it's kind of like a gentle blue. Yeah. Okay. So it all yeah. depends on what you want to make your scarf color too. Yeah. Like we always tell the kids and the adults that if they want to do a different color on their scarf, we oh, would just get them a different the color right? for sure. But your brush still has a lot okay. of different colors on it. Okay, so now yeah, you're just going to fill in the other scarf. In between so, where yeah, the so come up is. here and come down a little, and you're going to fill that in. Okay, we're between the Ds. Yep, between the Ds. You're just going to make it that, make it look like a scarf. Right. You know how I say, make it look like a moose or make it look like this? Make it look like a scarf. So when is the next uh, painting class for, for people who want to join in on the next one? Or are y'all? Um, we were good. all. No. We're booked up for the kids' I class. I think we have one spot for the kids' class. <laughs> the adult. I'm looking at my moose. <laughs> this the, is the judge free art zone. <laughs> no, no, no. We judge a lot. You're doing so You're good, doing great. Mr. Kids. But You've got a style. <laughs> when to you. did you pass grade two? Was it last year or? Grade two art? <laughs> well, I stopped in grade eight, so you can tell. <laughs> 
And you're just going to do fill in all those gaps there with the... Uh, I don't have that double scarf, though. That's a... You didn't no. do your bird? I didn't. I didn't know. But you see she has, like, a, like the scarf thingy? It's because you didn't do your bird. Oh, you did I, I didn't do you my didn't bird. You didn't do the bird. See, he doesn't pay attention. Yeah, but <laughs> my guy doesn't need a bird. He's, he's thinking. See? And my, my guy needs more globs of paint. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's different. Yeah, that's way... That Everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody is that's different. Right. Some okay. You can have 12. Well, that's the thing. 12. You have 12 people in a class painting yeah. those moves. There's yeah. going to be 12 different variations. No, 11 of pay moves. attention and one don't. No. Okay. I also forgot to put in our Look stars at, at the beginning. We should jump off the canvas and start. Uh, <laughs> it's going to go join its buddies at Cedar Meadows. All okay. Right. So now we're going to dip our brush back into that nice um, Payne's gray again. Oh, we're going into Payne's gray. Yeah, Payne's gray. Okay. Try to get most of it off your brush. So you dip it in and then you dab it onto okay. the cloth. Okay. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put a little bit of a little detail. color inside there. In the gray part. So yeah. So you're just going to try to put a little there bit of go. blended in there. A little bit of splash. A little bit of color. A little, a little bit of color. A little, a little bit of texture on it. A little bit of splash will do you? Yeah. Just adding a little tiny yeah. bit of texture. And now we kind of have to wait for that to dry for the final, final step. Um, but while we're waiting for that to dry, there is one thing that we did not do. Joanne says my... Uh, uh, His looks angry. Oh, my, no. my, mine looks like it has a, a sty. Mine's got one of those wild... <laughs> <laughs> my, my, mine looks like it was staring at... Uh, it, it got yeah. an antler in the eye. Yeah, yours oh. looks like a moose illegally shot, and the m and is looking for the, for the bad boys. Have, have you seen this moose? Yeah, that's right. Mine that's looks right. like that's, a beautiful Maybe that's the one moose. I hit in 2011. That's what it looks like now. <laughs> yeah. oh mine looks like a beautiful moose waiting for Christmas. <laughs> what is... My, my, mine looks like a cross of a, a moose between... Yeah. Uh, looks like a, an aardvark and a beaver's Nose. <laughs> well, so see again. It, my it, question is, what happened to your nice dog? Well, see, I. I <laughs> oh no. I, as you move along, it, uh, it went from a Labrador Retriever into what this is now, right now. I, I think it's a very cute there moose, to be honest cute with you. Moose. Yeah. A moose. Mm -hmm. It's very amusing. We're gonna pull that one. Okay. While again. we're waiting for th that part to dry, <laughs> yeah. what we're gonna do is take the very finest brush that you have, the very pointy. The very finest. Yeah, yeah. tiniest, okay. uh, uh, smallest. Well, some of them are pencils, by the I way. I got one here. Pencil, that's okay. a brush. That's a brush. Okay. Yeah. brush. You're gonna dip it in the white. You're coating in the bright white like, or that yeah. other white. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay. Shape. Doesn't matter it, which it white. In the water. And you're, so this is the I forgot to speckle it for you. Yeah. So you're just gonna put what a few stars. These stars. are stars in the background. This is what the yellow is all about. No, white. White. Yeah. Huh. Just gonna put a few stars in. Wherever you want. Mm -hmm. Wherever you want. Like I have the big dipper in mine. What's yours? There you go. Like There's nothing to save yours because when you can draw the most beautiful dipper you want, <laughs> you're done for. <laughs> Dale's gonna go for a next class. Okay, this is what not to do. Very nice. Yeah. And so this will be on the greeting as you come into Kins and Club. We'll put our mooses uh, for there you. There you go. You walk into the door. Maybe you could take them Maybe to Moose nice... FM. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're Country 93.1 now, but uh, oh, they yeah. have the moose there. Yeah, 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 there you go. Maybe they can, uh, they can showcase yeah. it in their studio. There. So I'm just putting in a few. Some come off the... Yours look, it looks like there. yours has an attitude. <laughs> he does. He's just like me. I love him. And there you go. This is it? This is it. We did pretty good, eh? Who won? Who won? Can you go? You mind That's... showing mine? Oh, for sure. We don't, I don't know if we're we're going to show both of them close up. All right. Close up. And again, mine, uh, mine I got a bit of a, uh, I'm going to say got bit a by a mosquito. Yeah. So that's clumps. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the we're going to call him Angry Moose, and we're going to call this one, I, yeah, that, I, got, poked in the eye, the, I got poked <laughs> in the eye with an antler. <laughs> that's my moose right there. You even have or paint on the back of yours. <laughs> yeah. I do. Look at that. I got uh, <laughs> the moose. Mark had go. some. Mark's moose got pink eye. <laughs> yeah, well, well, oh, and, we're gonna get. Oh, to, and if you want to blend your scarf, you can do this. I need. To, I need to blend the whole thing. <laughs> you need to blend and start a whole. Uh, can, I, can I just have a new canvas? Hello, how are you doing? This guy really needs a cigar, though. I right? like him. Yeah, yes. like a glass of whiskey. Right. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to take the last step is to blend your scarf to give it a little bit of texture okay. there. Okay. Oh, geez, so you're going to just take it and you're going to smear it a tiny bit. That's a tiny bit Payne's in the blue again. The, pain, the 
Paint. The paint's gray. Oh, paint's gray. And a little bit of white. And a little bit of white. I feel like I'm gonna wreck it. So okay, paint's gray. No, you're good. You're good. No, you're a good. little bit of white. You're gonna dap it, okay. dap it off, just or dab, dab it off, screen. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah and you're just gonna white. do this. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on here. So paint's gray, and you said a little bit of white. Yeah, and you're just gonna do this. I'm gonna give it a little bit of texture. You got it. And I might ruin mine, do I? No, you and won't. Then you put it, that's gonna be your shadow See? for your white parts on oh. your scarf. So there. You I go right across the whole thing. Got it. In the middle of everything? Yeah, I just go like this. Right across. Where just like this. <laughs> I'll show up here. I ruin my scarf. There we go. That ruined your scarf? No. There we go. Uh -oh. I really well, yours was a bit white, yeah. but that's okay, that's okay. because that's okay. it looks like it's knitted all together. You know how you get those scarves and then one color blends into the other? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's perfect. His original paint from the circle still hasn't dried. Never mind the rest of it. <laughs> and that is it. And then what we also use our white gel pens for is yeah. if you want to sign it. That's right. I really pass? think you guys should well, sign it in the corner. Yeah, okay. Make sure the corner's dry though, or the or it won't go on. What color? Do you no, you with? use oh, with your pen. Sign it with this your pet, jelly roll. The, the, the jelly my, my jelly roll. Yeah. yeah, your jelly roll. There you go. You, yeah. And you put it wherever. You there. Look at that. The awesome. <laughs> there you go. There we go. All right. Let's now, dab. can we get a vote? You better yeah, not have written my name on that thing. Clump. I don't on want my one. name That's on that right. one. I put uh, <laughs> you know, my moose. That's it. We, we learned I, how to do a moose. Which one there did you, you go. spill paint on the back I got, of your I Now, so. you know what? I think we should take these ones down. <laughs> and we'll put those on the and, and we're going to put these ones up so that people can see okay, them together. And oh, should I touch this master? And they can, they can. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Oh no! Over my knee. Oh, jeez! Look what happened. I saved it for you. There we go. See how, how angry he gets. There. When he's... Look at that. Oh, awesome. Much more beautiful. Yeah. Very Thank good. You very there you go. Thank I'm good. proud of you guys. Very good. I like Jamie's. Yeah, that's we, we, right. We did pretty good. And, and, you and did Janice very always good. cheers for you, and she. I even turned her today. <laughs> yeah. That's it, I like Mark. Janice, that's it. That's what I. Uh, well. Well, sorry, Mark. I like Jamie's. There we go. I had one one big fan of that uh, moose. I was going to give this away as a prize tonight. Like it's even in here. Your kids. My my little guy, uh, Caden, wants this for his bedroom. So uh, I can, I cannot, for the life of me, give that away. That's so. right. That's the only person that wanted it. Was, was <laughs> Kate, yeah. Well, I asked uh, bo both boys, and apparently Caden was the one who wants <laughs> that in his room. Okay, pal. We got uh, GTA three. So the third. You know, do you know how many GTAs there are? Uh geez, I don't. Maybe is, is there five? There's got to be. Yeah, there's GTA five. Yeah. But uh, it was. I see a lot of GTA threes. That is it. Joanne Savard uh, and Who's crew. Everybody in there with Grand Theft Auto three. <laughs> it, it the the uh, the moose looks stoned. Oh, yeah, yeah, not. marks. It does not. You see, uh, uh, Joanne out there altered this picture online. She's got uh, mine with your red, red bloodshot like. eyes. You, you, your moose did visit the cannabis store. <laughs> well, All the right, cannabis the, store right across the street here. Mm, all right, we're, we're we're halfway through this action-packed trivia. You halfway through. Uh, what uh, what <coughs> game? This is number ten here. What game is claimed by Activision? to be the first single video game title to exceed $1 billion in sales. Oh, the first single video game. So not a, I, I would bet if it was like a series. Now this is claimed by Activision though. So maybe there's other claim. This could be the, the controversial question, but okay. Activision claims that they were the first single video game to exceed yes, $1 billion Yes, but you know, they're, yeah. So sales. for series, I would say Madden or Call of Duty, but those are series. But the single video game, wow, yeah. that, that is a great question. The first single video game title to exceed yeah. one billion in because sales. The biggest franchise out there is Call of Duty. I think they're toe to toe with Madden. It might be Call of Duty, uh, but for this single game, let's I get don't uh, know. let's pop up some uh, some Call guesses. Uh, COD, COD. That's Call of Duty. Kids, okay, but. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Call it I gotta help him out with this lingo here. Not, uh, yeah, yeah, no I'm, I'm not into the gaming world yet. No, uh, you're not, you're uh, Call of Duty, no. Firewalk, uh, Blockbuster, no. Space Invaders, LOL, not it. From uh, Prince, Prince Bree, tuning in. We've got another COD. All right, so 
See, I would have said, but you said this is franchise Call of Duty. You're saying it's a single game. A single game. So uh, I don't know this Video answer. game Space claimed invading. by Activision exceeded one billion in Dale, sales when it, Dale when says, it hit the market. Dale and Joanne are saying Guitar well, Hero. Well, there's Guitar Hero, yes. Yeah. They're, uh, they are warm. Let's they just are say warm. they're warm. They're in the playing field. What's that mean? Guitar here, they're they're close to the the actual answer. Do you mean rock band or it's one of the other guitar? Ah, uh, it's uh, it, 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 let's just say it might it might be tied to a guitar hero. All right, Kinsman, without any suspense, I'm pulling it up here. Guitar Hero Three: Legends of Rock is what wow. uh, the answer. Wow, that's the single, the first single game to reach a billion in a sales. A billion dollars. I need someone to Google. in sales. I yeah. don't know. Uh, I don't believe your answer. I, I need someone to Google that. For no, me. no, don't be Googling anything. <laughs> All right, pal. Number 11. Number 11. Here we go. Which game did uh, Zenga release on Facebook in 2009, reaching 10 million daily active users within its first six weeks of use and play? Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, Zenga, right. It was a big thing. So Facebook, like Candy Crush was a big one. Yeah. But I'm thinking Candy Crush was like later. Uh, yeah, it's not, uh, Candy not, Crush is the one with all the balls, right? It's These... not Candy Crush, no. Candy Crush is a big one, though. It's not. Uh, it's not like the the blocker breaker, you know, ball breaker. It's not that either. Uh, okay, let's so... get some answers oh, look, flowing. Got, uh, Dale, Dale Richard says possibly Farmville. Catherine says Farmville. Webkins uh, from Gabrielle. Eric says Farmville. Farmville from Amy. Okay, Pat. Uh, I'm sensing a Farmville trend here. Well, there's candy a crush, Candy there's Crush Louise. from Louise. All right, so if I'm going, oh, Angry Birds 2 is a great guess. Okay, I'm going to, hmm. See, my gut says Angry Birds, but the majority says Farmville. So I'm going to go with Farmville. Going to go with Farmville. That is the correct answer, oh, okay. Farmville. The magic. The magic never ceases there, kids. The magic never ceases. <laughs> and keep in mind, comment, uh, no matter if you're right or wrong, you'll have a chance to win some good prizes. Uh, they're always good here, but uh, right. some great prizes on tonight's Oh, show. I see what you were referring to before now. Okay, this is the snake question. Yeah, so this is uh, the snake. Uh, which phone company preloaded snake into its mobile phones and created the resurgence in the game? Mm. Oh, okay. So yeah. Okay, the resurgence. So I love Snake. That was an awesome game. I spent hours on my BlackBerry with this game. Um, but what phone company? It uh, wasn't. It wouldn't. It uh, wouldn't have been a BlackBerry. No, it, it, it's no. before a BlackBerry. I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, but you're, you're right. See, Chris thinks BlackBerry, BlackBerry from Chris Louise Bell from Scott Raymond. No, uh, Nokia from Chad. He Ooh. might be warm. Uh, BlackBerry from Cynthia. Also, Guy jumping onto uh, the Chad bandwagon. Motorola with Dave Conlon. This Dale Nokia. Richards always seems to have these answers from right. Dale Richards. He's Nokia like five from for Natalie, five. Uh, Pichette. Uh, okay, pal. Uh, Sony. All right, so I want to say Blockbuster guy has it right, but I don't think he does. My, once again, my gut's saying BlackBerry, but you, you already told me. It's I a said, yeah, bit BlackBerry, uh, close, but no cigar. Okay, I'm with Roxanne, am I right? Roxanne with Nokia, yes. All Nokia right. is uh, the correct See, answer. See, Ronnie almost, almost took me down the wrong road. Can't trust that uh, blockbuster guy no, right there. Can't, can't trust the blockbuster guy. Oh, I like this one right here. So here it is. Uh, what is the most downloaded freemium game series of all time? Is this your play on words for premium, or is it an actual word? That's a, that's an actual word. So this is you're saying what's the most downloaded free game of all a time? A freemium game series. Yeah. yeah, you didn't have to pay for this one. What are those free sites you like to go to on your phone you were telling me about this morning? What free sites? Yeah, they're, they're free sites, and they have, like, a weird, like, what's that letter in the alphabet? I can't remember. You, like, you told me about them this morning. I can't remember. <laughs> but You'll have to refresh me after the show. A freemium, a, a freemium game series, the most downloaded freemium game series of all time is? Well, there's, a, there's Johnny O, by the way. Hi, Johnny O. I wonder he when says, we're going to get our lineup. Not uh, not Tetris. Good guess, yeah. Johnny O. We're looking forward to uh, Rock of the River next year. Yeah, there's supposed to be a lineup announcement at some yes, point. Yes, yes, yes. We're, uh, we're going to be uh, itching for that again. Uh, it'd be good to get tickets for they that. They do a lot Christmas. of good work over there. Uh, what's that? Ga Gaia? Mm -hmm. 
Dale Richards says Pokemon. Minecraft. Oh. Well, there we go. Soon. Johnny O says soon. So soon, soon, stay soon. Stay tuned, as we say, Ginsman. We'll, uh, we'll, get, uh, we'll get the news on, uh, on our show. All right, pal. Well, so Solitaire from Guy, uh, Guy Foise, uh, Elden Ring. Minecraft, Ooh. not mind. Not okay. Mindcraft. So I have to... I want to so play far, I haven't seen it yet. Keep uh, going oh, through Oh, really? Because I was about to guess Minecraft. No, Minecraft is not it. Yes, he's coming on the show absolutely. anytime. Yes. <laughs> Johnny O, just uh, keep us in the loop. We'll, uh, Bring we'll that keep old a spot up. open for you, buddy. Oh, uh, Minecraft. Didn't hear Chris the question. Lee's. There it oh. is. What is the most the downloaded? Most downloaded freemium game series of all time. Are you ready? Mm. And the answer is... Angry Birds. Ah, you little trickster there, Kinsman. I, I can't uh, lob them sure all the time. Are you sure this is right? Because I, I'm thinking more Minecraft. No. But no, Minecraft, you actually have to pay for it. So you could be right. But okay. remember the freemium. Okay. Freemium. There's your new word for the night. You can use a, a freemium well, in be, uh, tomorrow's uh, conversation the around the water cooler, as they say. All right. <laughs> uh, are we ready for this one? This one might be a little bit easier. Uh, what year were the Furbies released? Now, the Furbies were the small things? Uh, Colorful? Furbies were like, uh, yeah, they had those, uh, the, 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 the eyes and ears that folded and flapped. Were they small Looked and like colorful? little miniature gremlins. Gremlins. Hey, gremlins is coming to the yeah, theater, Yeah, they're coming, the uh, coming to Timmins uh, on Friday. It's an oldie, but uh, it's coming back Friday night. Oh, you stumped zero people on this one because I see a lot of 98. And oh. I should say, Gremlins will be in the theater as of Thursday. It's always a, a day before they uh, they bring it back. Well, wait, isn't it part of that wind? That, that oh, maybe. It, okay, yeah, it is on uh, Friday. Yeah, it's part of that. Uh, the 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 night terrors folks are putting on a Christmas uh, Christmas uh, movies. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think Gremlins is part of that. Okay, so I'm getting a lot of '98. You stumped zero. 1998. I, guess... I I stumped absolutely no one with that one. That is uh, 1998. Right. My second, my second year in college. Oh, everything! When, everything, when that happened, okay. I had fur, I had Furbies on the ledge in my my dorm room. I'm sure you did. <laughs> did you All right, a, you ready? Did you have a sock on the door handle also? <laughs> no there answer. We go. Okay. <laughs> Na name the toy. Has a red outer case with two knobs. Toy with a red outer case and with two, two knobs. Hmm. And there was no socks on the door back in my uh, college oh, oh. dorm. There was, uh, I, I shared a, a dorm with five, five other uh, gentlemen. Oh, no. Oh, kids. Look at these. Remember these Etch-a-Sketches? Oh, yes, etch -a -sketches, yes. Etch-a-Sketches. Uh, yeah, I know people who can actually draw pretty well with those Etch-a-Sketches. We can't even paint the moose. Okay, so everyone's saying paint the moose well. Etch-a-Sketch. Yeah, Etch-a-Sketch is the correct <laughs> answer. All right. Pal. So this one might be a little bit of a, a stumper, though. What uh, was Play-Doh originally sold as? Oh, interesting. Wasn't, uh, well, it was called Play-Doh, but uh, what, uh, what was it food? sold as? Was it like a food? Well, I don't know. You can put your comment in the, the comments. <laughs> well, how much more work do you want me to do here tonight? <laughs> like running the show from this iPad while you're enjoying your life of luxury. Uh, I'm enjoying I, the lap of luxury. Yeah. I, I should have thrown in some, uh, some weird questions. Bath that soap from Sandra? Plasticine? Plasticine, no, that's from Johnny cleaning. O. Uh, cleaning, LOL. Tammy, uh, Tammy uh, might uh, might be warm on that one. Uh, putty from Gary uh, Bailey. Window seal from Chad Dabano. Someone said wallpaper cleaner. Uh, Eric says key molds to rob banks. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good answer. All right, uh, insulation, LOL. Okay. Bath soap from Guy. So if I'm wallpaper have to, cleaner from Crystal Millette. If I'm going for a guess, I'm going to go with bath soap. It was not bath soap. No. Wallpaper Believe it or not, cleaner. wallpaper cleaner. Oh, really? Yeah. How did you know this? You searched this one. I searched that one at uh, the, the bowels of the internet for that one. <laughs> All, right. All right. Number 17. Number 17. How many spaces are there on a standard game of Monopoly, oh. the Monopoly game board? I, I know this answer. It's 10 a side. So there's four sides, so it's 40. You think it's 40? I don't right? know. Let's, it has uh, to be, right? Let, let, let's pull the audience here. Right, because I always know you count down from 10 how many close 
how many spaces you need to get to the free space, which usually has that five hundred dollars or free parking. So you're saying forty. Let's uh, well, you're going to the the comments there. Uh, keep in mind, Sports for Kids Timmins. Their twenty twenty three applications are now open. You can go see them at the Sportsplex. Colleen will uh, hook you up. Sports for uh, Sports for Kids Timmins dot com. Uh, they just opened as of today, nine thirty this morning. All right. Well, we we have a mix of answers. We have thirty nines, forty fours. 42s, 40s, 36s, 38s, 38s, 50s. People, oh, 50, Natalie uh, Landers. Can, I know, it has to be. It's 10, 10, 10, and 10. So you think, uh, I'm the, going you, with you 40. think it's 40? Am I right? Eric, uh, Eric Pacan uh, says uh, 40. 40. And the answer is a 40. Yes. All right, all right. There's 40 in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we ready for this next one? Oh. So here we go. Yes. Name the handheld digital pet created in Japan. Ooh, yes. This, uh, this uh, might be a stumper, but uh, then again, might not. Is this not. the one where it's sort of the case flipped open? And you had to sort uh, I, I think, of feed it? I think it? there was uh, some type of shell with these, yes. Yeah, and you had to feed it, right? Like it was a big, like, don't, you have to feed you all. Oh, don't yeah. feed it before midnight. Now, that's, uh, those are gremlins. No, but these things you had to feed, digitally feed them. Or, or it died, right? Yeah. I th oh, man. Let's see if we got any. Yeah. Name the handheld digital pet created in Japan. Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. of people say Tamagotchi, well, Tamagotchi, I'm telling Tamagaki, you right now, Tamagotchi. doesn't matter how you sell it or spell it. It's uh, how you pronounce it, right? Uh, Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi is, uh, is it. You did it, pal. Okay, okay. I like that one. I know I couldn't remember the name of it, but yeah. All right, number 19. Number 19. This might be a stumper. Uh, what doll created in 1959 was named after the inventor's daughter? How is this a stumper? That has to, wait. Like, first doll that What? No, the, it says what doll. So it could, uh, it could have been many dolls up until this point, but what doll created in 1959, it uh, was its inception year, was named after the inventor's daughter? Uh, I, I, like, I'm going to guess Barbie. You're guessing Barbie. Yeah. Well, let's see what people who, say. Uh, who, uh, who's chiming in here? We've okay, got we Barbie got... from Eric. Raggedy Ann from Catherine. Barbie from Chad Abano. We've got uh, Annie, Raggedy Ann, uh, Barbie from Lori. Mm. Barbie from Gabrielle. So we got a couple Raggedy Ann's and a bunch of Barbies. Bunch of Barbies, uh, Joanne Savard. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the bulk and uh, say that they are correct, uh, correct with well, the yeah, Barbie doll. I knew you weren't going to give us something like an obscure doll. You're going to give us the big doll. Give you a big, uh, big doll. All right, we're at number 20 of 22, by the way. Bro. Yeah, we're, uh, we're whipping through these uh, nicely here. So uh, this is the, the earliest record of a toy dates back to 500 B.C., before Christ in a Greek reference. They were made from wood, metal, and painted terracotta. What, mm. uh, what toy am I? I'm thinking those Ukrainian dolls that get, like, smaller and smaller. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. What are those called? Um, you know, you know, like... I, so I, I know. I, I, I can picture the, yeah. the doll there. They, there was, like, seven of them in there. And then yeah, they, and they get, yeah. they're really awesome, but... Uh, Love the meme of that one where it's standing at uh, the movie theater getting caught, saying, okay, come on now, spit out your money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got, let's see... Uh, Checkers, we. Th this is gonna be a good battle here, pal. Yeah. Spinning top. The spinning top. These are all like retro. Obviously, it's gonna be an older toy, right? The earliest record of a toy dates back to 500 BC in a Greek reference. They were made from wood, metal, and painted terracotta. Got a spinning top there from Gary Bailey. Uh, po Pocono. Oh. Man. Uh, a yo-yo from Dave. So right now yo -yos it's a battle from Lori. It's a battle between the spin tops and the yo-yos. And the yo-yos. I work with Catherine says a doll, or as my uh, French butt calls it, a uh, what a toppy. Backgammon from Amy uh, Heward. Gary says a wagon. A wagon. Okay, well, this is a tough one, but I'm gonna have to go if I'm guessing. Ooh, I'm going with yo-yo. Gonna go with the yo-yo. And yes. that is it. Because yes. I work with one. You, you work with a yo-yo. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, that was a good one. You had me thinking there, pal. <laughs> All 
All right, we're ready to go. This is uh, question number 21. We've got uh, two left here. Here we go. In 1952, this toy became the first toy ever to be advertised on television. Okay, so see, I would have said Barbie, but now you've given us Barbie in 1959. Yeah, so Barbie so came out in 1959. So this is pre-Barbie. It's a So this toy. is the first toy ever televised as an advertisement on TV. Wow, okay. That is a great question. And there was controversy uh, a few years later after uh, it was the advertisements because they're, it was promoting bad health. I'm going to have to go to, uh, okay, we got lots of Slinkies got Slinky here. from Crystal, Slinky from uh, Louise. Ooh, Potato Head. A potato Head from Natalie uh, Pichette. Yeah. Uh, I think potato it came... Head, I think it came out before Barbie, LOL. Gabrielle says that. Uh, Mr. Potato Head from Lori, Potato Head. A lot of Potato Heads coming in. Well, now... Slinky from Eric. Where... We're in a controversy. Now we're in our own conflict between Slinky and Potato Head. But in 1952, toy came it. and became the first toy to be advertised on TV, and it's two nothing Leafs. Oh. Love it. Easy Bake Oven. All Not right, the Kinsman. Easy Bake Oven. No. I am 1952. So yeah, seven Slinky, years before Barbie came out. Slinky or Potato Head seems to be the big one. Uh, I'm going to go with, ooh, I'm going to go with Slinky on this one. Eh, that's not it. No, uh, <laughs> it Mr. Potato, potato Head. Head. Okay, whatever. And then uh, back in the day, uh, when, when everybody smoked, uh, they, they said Mr. Potato Head was putting out a bad vibe with the pipe, and they got rid of the pipe. Oh, man. I think you can still find the dog. If you can find the Potato Head with the pipe, apparently it's worth a ton of money. There is some money. All right, All right. this is the, oh, we're, 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 we're at the last question. Is this the big one right here? Uh, the big uh, question. Yeah, this is it here. This is uh, this is uh, the doozy here. This toy outproduces tires making it the world's biggest vehicle tire manufacturer. And they got this title back in 2001, where they produced 311 million in one calendar year. In tires? Yeah. This toy outproduces actual tires, Are making it the world's biggest vehicle tire manufacturer on the planet. And back in 2001, they produced 311 million I'm tires. So, you're not going to say they must have been really tired? No, you... It sounds like something. We're gonna re, we're gonna re, retire that one. Okay, so pal. I, okay, so we got Hot Wheels. We got we, Hot Wheels which is from a good guess. Crystal Dawn. But I would not guess this. I'm gonna. I'm with Scott, Amy, Selena, Louise, Gary Bailey, Gabriel, Guy, Dave. Uh, a lot of a lot of Legos out there. Mel, Joanne, and a bunch of others. Uh, there are some Hot Wheels, though. Well, it's funny. I want to I go back. There was a, a question that wasn't into this list, but uh, a Hot Wheels-related uh, topic. Uh, in Hot Wheels, the 1968 Corvette, Hot Wheels debuted the 68 Corvette before the actual manufacturer debuted the car. So when they saw the car out on the shelf, mm -hmm. they actually had to rush production to get their car out. These are the basics to get you started. The ball is played below the top line or outline and above the bottom line, which is also called the tin. But before you start... Warm yourself up and the ball. Also, check which ball to play with, depending on your ability. When serving, one foot must be inside the box. The ball must hit between the outline and the service line and land in the opposite quarter. You can return the ball on the bounce or step forward and volley, as long as it stays within the court. After every shot, try to get back to the T zone. That will give you the best position to cover the next shot. To score a point, you either make the ball impossible to play or force an error from your opponent. And remember, the ball can only bounce once. Once you've played your shot, you must try to get out of the way of the ball and your opponent. Generally, if you don't, that's called a stroke and they win the point. If you try but can't, that's a let and you play the point again. Whoever wins the point serves. Whoever scores 11 points wins the game. But if it's 10 all, you must win by two clear points. It's the best of five games that wins the match. Young player of the year back in uh, 2007, yeah. Maria. And, uh, in 2009, she won third place in the World Junior Women's Ooh. Squash Championship. October 2012, she uh, won the first annual Voice of Hope Award from Canadian First Lady Laureen Harper, which is quite uh, an accolade. And a lot of people say that, well, they can hear the music in the background, absolutely. So there are people upstairs 
Um, well, maybe not upstairs, but they're at the Northern College Pub. They can hear the, 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 the music. It's not too loud down here, but uh, maybe the, the mics are a little bit more sensitive from where we are. Well, that's right, but it is a little bit... But it, it is, is a, a pop. It's a fun atmosphere. Pop. It's a fun atmosphere. Yeah, there's going to be noise in there. And there's still time Rochelle to get... Rochelle saying, hey, guys, hi. Uh, our work again, missing the show. Well, you can always rewatch the show. Beauty of our shows are our shows stay online forever. So it's seven to four for Maria. And Justin's saying, wow, uh, squash is a food too. It sure is, Justin. Five, seven. So a point scored by the Q Kinsman to close the gap to two. It happens very quickly. It here, does, yeah, six, yeah. Seven. So six, seven. Yeah. So Mike, Marie, Mike is coming back. Mike is coming back. He's closed the gap to one point in a very crucial game four. But I love that right uh -oh. there. 8-6 for Maria. Three points to close it out, my friend. Oh, eight, oh. seven. Nine, six. Oh, nine, six. Not paying attention there, Kinsman. That's all they have Cliff do. That's why they have Cliff do the score. Yeah, you better let Cliff do all the score in here. Okay, Justin saying impressive skills, yes. Oh, beyond two, impressive. two of the best. On the men and uh, ladies side for squash worldwide. 10-6, right game ball. 10-6, oh, so next point to Maria wins the game. So here we ties go. us at two, as we'll predicted. Tie it up. And it's the best of five. And we'll go split screen for this. Yeah, we don't want to miss any of the action here. Game to Maria. And there it is. We yeah, have drawn it at it two. Never say uh, never. I would say that that's never a convincing game four. I, you know, you were saying Mike might have took it there, but you were wrong again. I had confidence well, in Well, yeah, as I said, I said, uh, you, you got to kind of root for the underdog in those situations. That's uh, right. You know, they're backs up against the wall. I like using the game cliches, yes. all the cliches here. Now, staving off elimination. <laughs> she, saving she, off elimination. She, she's now, now tied the match. Now you need to make a decision, okay, because yeah. this is the battle of sexes. It's an exhibition match, but it's competitive, and there is a winner. It is. And there is someone who's not going to win. Now, I know not everyone gets a participation trophy. So, we're, What's we're, your prediction for Game 5? My prediction, Game 5, I'm going to say Maria will take the cake. She's going right. to come back and storm back here. So I'm yeah. also predicting Maria okay. uh, to take this, but I'm not sure because Mike have very, was very dominant on the odd games, one and three. And Maria next, about uh, the next winner takes four. all. There's and, Mike coming well, in. Well, Mike just gave he's you got, the he's evil got the eye. Over, the overconfident he, smile. Mike gave you the eye right. because you were team Mike, and now you've switched last <laughs> I've minute. I've switched. He's like, that's it. That's he's it. He's going to go and uh, egg my car out in the parking lot. Either way, you're looking two of the best of the world. Uh, demonstrating an exhibition match. Games are at two to two. Two to two. Maria serves the ball. So Maria serves at the beginning of game five, my friend, and the action's up here at the Northern College Gym. And out, one love. One love. One love. One love. For McHugh right off the bat. Do a song, one love, and then for you too. So <laughs> Mike, t Mike takes it. Oh. Love. It's 2 nothing McHugh in the decisive game, Kinsman. So your, your prediction might be wrong again. Yeah, Laurie's saying hello, hello. Forgot we were on at 6. Yes, uh, we had to catch the squash action down here, Laurie. Between Mike McHugh and Maria Torpai, squash exhibition. And Mike, you can, you can actually watch the matchup in the Northern College pub right now. That's where everybody is jam-packed, drinks in hand. Mike is up 3 nothing in the decisive game here. Ah, and uh, he, he heard, he came in with that, uh, the, 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 the big uh, chagrin smile. Maria closing all the gap. It's now almost as if he's going to close that. Close 3 that to here. 1 for McHugh. Mike yeah, McHugh up 3 1. Oh, 4 1 now. 4 1 for McHugh, spreading the gap there, Kinsman. Yeah, Mike, uh, Mike is, his uh, home club is the Toronto Racket Club and Toronto Athletic Club. 5 1. Five. Five two for McHugh, de decisive game. Hughes. Six points to take the victory. I would not count Maria out yet. You're watching two of the best in the world. Ooh, look at that. Two of the go, best right squash there. players on the planet right here at Northern College right now. Pleasure to be a part of this squash exhibition. And uh, 
uh, look at the bullet he, return. The bullet return, absolutely uh, phenomenal. And again, we were talking about uh, the background of uh, Maria Torpakai. If you if you want to read up on Maria, j just uh, she she she's an inspiration. And not only that, you have an opportunity to come to the college, meet Maria, meet Mike at the conclusion of the squash exhibition match. A meet and greet, exclusive meet and greet after tonight's match. Well, and what we're going to be six, five. It, six to five. Uh, it, they're really keeping the suspense going right up to the end, my friend. Right up, I think so. That's right. It's a, it's a shame, as they say, it's a shame that uh, there has to be a, a winner and a loser. They're both winners in my I mind. I don't think there's a shame in competitive sports. I think there always should be a winner and a loser. And But at the end of the day, they're here demonstrating an, an amazing sport in uh, squash court that we have right in our backyard here Eight in five. South Porcupine. 8-5 McHugh, three points away from taking the battle of the sexes. Six, eight. And Mike, Mike's been a professional squash player since 2011. Joined the uh, PSA World Tour. That's right. He's uh, currently playing on the squash circuit Instead now. of spending all the time at the public college, you could have been playing squash and you could have been up there with the McHughes. Up there with the, the McHughes of the world. That's right. You, you, were, you were in Pubology 101 though. Reaction time is, you don't get a lot of reaction time in squash. No, there's no reaction time. Very quick. Got to be quick on your toes. You know, certainly in, in challenging times uh, through COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we big. did a lot of writing via Zoom and, um, you know, just sort of mm -hmm. emailing back and forth. So, but a testament to how we adapt and humans prevail. Yeah. And we did, and we created this really, really... Uh, wonderful record that, that uh, I'm certainly proud of, and I hope uh, Lisa is too. Oh, I am. And, I most uh, certainly am. And we're going to play some of those songs for yeah, you tomorrow nice. night. It's going to be amazing. So, you know, we have, you know, the world-class musicians here in our community and live in our community. It's going to make an amazing night. I, I have a question for you. So I get it. Your taste in music usually generation Generational. Everyone's generation thinks their music is the best music. <laughs> of course, born in the 70s, I'm with you on the the, the, the 80s. And you know, when, when you see Amazing Molly Crew and Def yeah. Leppard and Joan Jett and Poison well, still sell out stadiums with uh, you know energetic, yeah. entertaining performances. I was there too. When you go from when you're working with Lisa, who's not an 80s glam band, Lisa has her, <laughs> her own sound. Um, what type of transformation has to go through your head? You know, if you're in '80s rock mode, now I gotta, I gotta help build something that fits the Lisa Fremont brand. That's you gotta get to know them personally, or how does that work? Yeah, 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 absolutely. That that's part of what encompasses just sort of getting to the core of because here's the reality, Clump. Uh, you. <laughs> you you are uniquely unrepeatable. There will never be another Clump ever to hit this planet. So. Conversely, the same thing with Lisa, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and any artist that I work with, but Lisa specifically, she had a very compelling story, right? And a big part of it was cancer survivor, right? Like that's that is a testament again to, testament you know, to yeah, that we that we can and, persevere uh, and yeah. prevail, right? Because, yeah. you know, sadly, I just lost a friend of cancer two months ago. So, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't make it through the other side of that horrendous plight right you. so that was that was part of the story that we started to unpack when we started talking about writing and and uh, and I mean, it was multi-leveled and multi-tiered but um, no in terms of of I mean you know what I think more more to the point being direct I think the 80s you know that just the songwriting um, the the adherence to really good melody with really good harmonic progression um, all sort of smashed mm -hmm. together, you know, at, at a time where it was just, you know, it was, it was new, it was fresh, and it was, we, we were, me throwing myself in there loosely, but um, it, it created this template of just the art at the time, right, that went into, you know, future generations, right? I mean, it, it mutated into different forms in some regard, but it was just really well-written songs that still today are hugely impactful, right? So... When it came to um, to writing with Lisa, it, you know, I mean, 
writing a good song technically isn't rocket science, right? There is there, to, 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 to write. Formula. There, there, yeah, there's a formula. There's, but at the end of the day, it's got to it's gotta hit you know, the writers a certain way, right? And it's got to resonate with you. And then you know, chances are if it resonates with you and or Lisa, then it's going to resonate with other people, right? Because uh, we have been so um, enmeshed in pop. Pop music comes from popular, meaning it has literally, you know, permeated the masses, right? Like a great number of people have said, yep, we like that. And then it, hence it becomes pop music. And uh, so when we came, you know, to the, the task of actually writing, um, yeah, it wasn't like, you know, and you had to s separate the, 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 you know, the, the chaff from the wheat too, to a degree. You, you know, not every song was like a home run. You go, map, map, that one's not as good as, you know, and so you just move on. But uh, I've also had the good fortune of every project, meaning, you know, because primarily I've been a journeyman, right? Like a lot of these bands I mentioned, same thing with Toronto. Um, you know, I, I interpret their hits or whatever, right? I stand on stage and I play their songs. And invariably through the years, you know, at the end of a tour, there'd be nurbling about doing a new recording. And because I'm a songwriter and because I, I produce, I'd always throw, uh, because everyone, you know, no one exists in a vacuum except maybe Prince. Um, you know, uh, but, but by and large, you know, collaboration, the sum is greater than the, the you know, the, um, the total, right? So we, um, I'd always sort of, you know, throw my hat in the ring, as it were. And invariably, I think there's maybe only one artist all through the 35 years I've been doing this that said, yeah, no, it's okay, I don't need to write with you. Invariably, they all said, yeah, why not? Let's, mm -hmm. let's hang out for an afternoon with a couple of guitars. Let's see what happens. And, yeah. and it, it always bore really, really, um, uh, you know, exciting um, opportunity and, yeah, so, I mean, at the end of the day, you don't know if you don't try, right? Everything's a risk in life. Yeah. There's a risk in not taking a risk. So I already, always took the risk. And, um, and, you know, I mean, it led to me producing records for Honeymoon Suite, for Platinum Blonde, for, and, uh, and then led me ultimately to uh, meeting Lisa and saying to her, I mean, we, we were really gearing up to go hard at it, and then March 2020 occurred. And it was just like, wah, 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 right? right? Yeah. But we still actually managed to, over the, that year and change, um, get the job done, right? So, again, mm -hmm. she's, a, she's a very strong girl. And, um, you know, I mean, she's battled a lot of, you know, deep, deep plight, that storms that take people out. And she's, she's here to say that um, if you don't get your tickets, like now-ish. Now-ish. Before nine. Before yes. nine. Before well, nine. that's the cutoff. That's right. I have, well, I mean, I would have a million questions for you, but I don't want to wear your voice down. But I guess if I had to pick one, it would be this. So I assume, like, when you work with Lisa, you provide a, an also a, a mentorship role. It's not just about the music. It's a, it's a mentor because you have walked through a, a, a couple decades of music. So you've seen successes, you've seen failures. Now, the music industry has changed since the 80s. You know, we're no, people are no longer excited for album release Tuesday. Uh, people put it online. Less people yes. listen to traditional radio. People are picking up it, the physical it's streaming. CD. So what, what have you had to do personally to sort of keep up what's important in the industry in 2022 compared to what was important in the industry in 1989? I suppose you had to evolve yourself. Well, yeah, and, I, you know, I've sort of been witness to, to the um, rise and fall of different formats, right? Mm -hmm. That literally, you know, you know, they would have sort of a shelf life of about, you know, 18 to 24 months kind of thing. And then a new format would, would, would appear on the, um, in the marketplace. Um, but I mean, I understand what you're saying and that, that's kind of been the, uh, the head scratcher for any new artist for sure today. But even, you know, even the, um, the established artists that are still out there. And I, I technically fall under the, the um, moniker of a heritage artist, believe it or not, right? So bands like Honeymoon Suite and Tom Cochran and Kim and, and Loverboy, um, these are all the bands that, that the band that I'm playing with, Toronto, now finds themselves on stage with. But the reality of it is, is that um, 
you think, okay, so now what, the, the demographic is between 40 and 70. And, and what was remarkable, um, there was a couple of shows we did this summer, and I, I, I always invariably, I'll go out into the crowd and uh, just, you know, to watch the other bands, just to see, you know, I go back to the soundboard and I, you know, just, just to get the, the lay of the land and how everything's sounding. Yeah. And I was quite uh, taken by how many young people were coming out, right? So I think no matter where we are in, in the world and, and where we are in the evolution of actually how we, the pathway to achieving and, and receiving uh, music or any technology, right? I mean, primarily, it's it's what we're what we're on right now, um, the intraweb, and um, and uh, and the fact of the matter is, is it music, music is transcendent, right? Like it is in my mind, it's truly the most universal uh, language and or art form there is, right? Like it literally transcends age, race, uh, cultures. And, you know, one song uh, can mean an absolutely different thing to every single person that, that, that hears it, right? So the fact that new music will always be made because of human nature, the spirit that we have, we, we're, you know, it, it, it helps elevate people when, you know, when they're uh, extremely elated and happy and it helps elevate people when they're extremely down and depressed, right? I mean, it's like, it's like humor, right? Like, there, there's no life without humor. There's no life without music, really, right? Well, they say uh, music's the, the universal language, and yeah. it truly is. We've all got demons, but I got a feeling yours and mine might get along. Oh. Cause you're in the darkness I can see where your heart is Cause your love left a light on mm. If we put together all our broken pieces Make them fit until all that we see is What we are because all that I need is you Yeah, you, you, you You're the miracle I've been wishing I would collide in Our in-studio carpet provided by End of the Roll Flooring Centers, located at 1185 Riverside Drive, Timmins. For beautiful laminate, luxury, vinyl, and carpet, call Manny and his team today, 705-360-9003. And how about our beautiful in-studio centerpieces provided by Mona Goche at Creative Boutique and Supplies. Call Mona for yours, 705-372-8190. You can even email her, Supplies at gmail. Dot com. And how about our in-studio coffee table? You can get a beautiful one just like this at Timmins Furniture. Come home to Timmins Furniture. See it like it. Take it home today. Go see Larry and his team at 374 Algonquin Boulevard East. 705-360-1499. And if you need anything voice, well, we put our trust in Bill Stevenson from Canadian VoiceOvers. Send all your scripts to voices at CanadianVoiceOvers.com. Thank you.